Ever wondered about the origins of firefighting? Let's dive into its history, starting from ancient Rome to modern America. Over 2,000 years ago, the first semblance of a public firefighting force was born. Emperor Augustus established the Vigiles in the first century AD. They patrolled the city streets for signs of fire, armed with buckets, axes, and a rudimentary form of a fire pump. In 24 BC, Vitruvius, a Roman architect and engineer, developed a water pump for firefighting, marking a significant advancement in the technology. However, it wasn't until the 18th century that firefighting took a more organized form. This innovation was brought by Benjamin Franklin, one of America's founding fathers. Witnessing the destruction caused by uncontrolled fires, Franklin established the Union Fire Company in Philadelphia in 1736. It was the first volunteer fire company in America, composed of 30 men committed to protecting their city from fire. Franklin's idea spread across the United States with volunteer fire brigades popping up everywhere. These early firefighters were not just heroes battling flames, but community builders, shaping the cities and towns we know today. So, the next time you see a fire truck, remember it's not a vehicle. It's a symbol of a history that spans centuries. The inception of firefighting is a tale of innovation, bravery, and community, humanity's enduring pursuit to protect and preserve. Did you know that firefighters do more than just fight fires? It's true. These brave souls wear many hats, each one as vital as the next in serving our communities. Let's shed some light on the lesser-known roles and responsibilities of firefighters. Firstly, firefighters are often the first responders to medical emergencies. They are trained in providing emergency medical services ranging from CPR to trauma care. In fact, a large portion of their job involves responding to medical calls. It's not only about fires, but also about saving lives in any situation that calls for immediate medical attention. But it doesn't stop there. Firefighters are also skilled in rescue operations. Whether it's a child stuck in a well, a pet trapped in a burning building, or a hiker lost in the wilderness, Firefighters are equipped to navigate dangerous situations to bring people and animals to safety. Their training in using specialized equipment and their physical fitness allow them to perform daring rescues in all sorts of challenging environments. More so, firefighters play a crucial role in disaster response. They are often among the first on the scene when natural disasters like hurricanes, floods, or earthquakes strike. They help evacuate people from danger zones, provide first aid, and manage emergency shelters. They also work closely with other agencies to coordinate relief efforts and ensure the safety and well-being of the affected communities. Firefighters also carry out public education. They visit schools, community centers, and public events to teach fire safety and prevention. They show us how to use fire extinguishers, plan escape routes, and what to do in case of a fire. Their aim is to empower us to protect ourselves and our homes from fire hazards. Lastly, let's not forget the role firefighters play in preserving the environment. They work tirelessly to control wildfires and protect our forests, parks, and wildlife. They also help clean up hazardous material spills and other environmental emergencies. Firefighters indeed wear many hats, making them indispensable to our communities. So, the next time you see a firefighter, remember they do a whole lot more than just fight fires. They save lives, rescue the helpless, respond to disasters, educate the public, and protect the environment. Truly, they are heroes in every sense of the word. Ever thought about how rigorous the training for becoming a firefighter is? Well, let's dive into the demanding world of firefighter training. It's a blend of physical and mental challenges, all designed to prepare these brave individuals for the unpredictable nature of their job. The journey begins with an education in fire science. This is where recruits learn about the behavior of fire, how it starts, spreads, and most importantly, how it can be controlled and extinguished. They delve into the chemistry of fire, studying the interaction of heat, fuel, and oxygen. They learn about different types of fires and the best methods to extinguish each one. This knowledge is crucial as it forms the foundation for strategic and safe firefighting. Next comes emergency medical training. A significant part of a firefighter's job involves providing medical assistance. Many are certified emergency medical technicians, or EMTs. They learn how to respond to heart attacks, strokes, car accidents, and other emergencies. They're trained to stabilize patients and provide life-saving care until they can be transported to a hospital. Firefighting is also a physically demanding job, requiring strength, endurance, and agility. Thus, physical conditioning is an integral part of the training process. 
Recruits undergo rigorous physical training designed to build their strength, increase their endurance, and improve their agility. They learn to carry heavy equipment, climb ladders, break down doors, and navigate through smoke-filled environments. Then there's the mental aspect. Firefighters must be able to make quick decisions under pressure, often in life or death situations. They're trained to stay calm, think clearly, and act decisively. They learn to work as a team, relying on each other for support and safety. And let's not forget the countless hours spent in simulated firefighting exercises where they get to apply all they've learned in a controlled environment, preparing them for the real deal. The road to becoming a firefighter is not an easy one, but it's certainly worthwhile. It's a path of continuous learning, physical exertion, and mental fortitude. It's a path that leads to a life of service, of bravery, and of making a difference in people's lives. Can you guess the weight of a firefighter's gear? It's a question that, unless you've worn it, can be surprisingly challenging to answer. Firefighting is not a profession that allows for light packing. Every call could be a matter of life or death, and each piece of equipment plays a critical role in ensuring the safety of the firefighter and those they are there to protect. Let's begin with the firefighter's protective clothing, often known as turnout gear. This includes a helmet, gloves, boots, and a protective coat and pants ensemble. The ensemble alone weighs around 25 pounds and is designed to withstand temperatures of up to 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Add in the helmet, gloves, and boots and you're looking at an additional 15 pounds. But that's just the beginning. Firefighters also carry a self-contained breathing apparatus, or SCBA. This life-saving device provides firefighters with breathable air in smoke-filled environments. Weighing in at about 25 pounds, it's a hefty but absolutely essential piece of equipment. Then there are the tools of the trade, axes, halligans, a hose line, a thermal imaging camera, and more. These can add another 50 to 70 pounds. And let's not forget the personal alert safety system device, a crucial tool that can signal a firefighter's location if they become immobilized or lost. All in all, a firefighter can carry anywhere from 120 to 150 pounds of gear during a call. That's like carrying a full-grown person on your back while navigating through extreme conditions and life-threatening situations. And so every piece of equipment, every ounce of weight is there for a reason. Each tool, each device, each protective garment plays a role in the complex, dangerous, and vitally important world of firefighting. As you can see, when it comes to a firefighter's gear, every piece of gear carries its weight in value, quite literally. Why do fire stations have poles, you might ask? Well, sit tight, because we're about to delve into the history of this iconic symbol of firefighting. Fire poles have a fascinating origin story. It all began in the late 19th century in the city of Chicago. Firefighters back then lived and worked in two-story stations. The ground floor housed the fire engine, while the second floor was where the crew slept. When an emergency call came in, firefighters had to scramble down the stairs, wasting precious seconds. One day, a firefighter named George Reed, stationed at Engine Company 21, had an idea. Inspired by the pole used by hayloft workers to quickly descend to the ground, he suggested installing a pole in the fire station. It was a simple solution, but one that would revolutionize the firefighter's response time. So the first fire pole was installed, made of polished wood, and ran from the dormitory right down to the engine room. And guess what? It worked! Firefighters could now slide down the pole and be ready for action in a heartbeat. The idea caught on, and soon, fire poles became a staple in fire stations across the globe. But why are these poles still in use today, in an age of elevators and advanced technology? The answer lies in the very essence of firefighting. Speed. Every second counts when lives and property are at stake. And the fire pole, despite its simplicity, offers the quickest route from rest to readiness. Today, fire poles are made of brass or stainless steel, providing a smooth and swift descent. They also come with safety features like braking systems and padding at the base. But the purpose remains the same, to get firefighters on the move as quickly as possible. So there you have it, the story of the fire pole. A seemingly simple contraption, but one that plays a crucial role in the life-saving work of firefighters. The fire pole, a unique and iconic symbol of firefighting, is all about speed. Did you know fire dogs serve a purpose beyond being mascots? Indeed, these canine companions have a rich history intertwined with the evolution of firefighting. It's a tale that stretches back to the days of horse-drawn fire carriages. In those early days of firefighting, Dalmatians were chosen for their unique ability to form strong bonds with horses. 
The dogs would run alongside the fire carriages, barking to clear the path and protect the horses from other animals or potential threats. Their distinctive black and white coats also made them easily recognizable in the chaos of a fire scene, allowing them to serve as a beacon of safety and security. But the role of fire dogs didn't end with the advent of motorized fire trucks. As firefighting evolved, so did the responsibilities of these four-legged heroes. Today, many fire dogs are trained as arson detection dogs, equipped with a sense of smell that is remarkably more sensitive than that of a human. These dogs can detect the smallest traces of accelerants, substances that can be used to start or accelerate the spread of fires. This ability has proven to be an invaluable tool in arson investigations, often leading to convictions that might not have been possible without their help. Beyond their practical roles, fire dogs also serve as ambassadors for fire safety education. They often make appearances at schools and community events, helping to teach children and adults alike about fire safety and prevention. Their friendly and approachable demeanor helps to make these important lessons more engaging and memorable. So, the next time you see a fire dog, whether it's a Dalmatian at a fire station or a Labrador at an arson investigation, remember that they're more than just mascots. They're working dogs with important jobs that help to keep us safe. They're a testament to the enduring partnership between humans and dogs, a partnership that continues to save lives and solve crimes. So, fire dogs aren't just cute, they're also quite heroic. Ever imagined working for 24 hours straight? It might sound like an impossible feat, but for many firefighters, it's just another day at the station. The rhythm of a day in the life of a firefighter is unlike any ordinary job. It's a cyclical pattern of work, rest, and readiness that stretches over a full day and night. The typical 24-hour shift begins with a morning roll call. Here, outgoing and incoming crews exchange vital information about the state of the equipment and any ongoing incidents. Once the handover is complete, the new shift begins their workday, which is anything but predictable. During these hours, firefighters are always on high alert. They might be responding to an emergency call, extinguishing a blazing fire, or providing life-saving medical assistance. But their responsibilities don't end there. When they're not actively fighting fires or saving lives, they're maintaining equipment, training, and even doing chores around the firehouse. It's a continuous cycle of work that demands both physical endurance and mental fortitude. But don't think it's all work and no play. Firefighters do get downtime during their 24-hour shift. This time is often spent resting, preparing meals, and catching up on much-needed sleep. The firehouse becomes a temporary home where they eat, sleep, and unwind. They live together, work together, and form bonds that can only be forged in the heat of the toughest situations. Even meals are a communal affair where everyone pitches in. Cooking duties are shared, and mealtimes serve as an important time for camaraderie and team building. And when the alarm sounds, they drop everything, ready to spring into action at a moment's notice. So, the next time you're clocking out after an eight-hour workday, spare a thought for the firefighters who are just halfway through their shift. For them, firefighting is not a nine-to-five job. It's a lifestyle. They dedicate their lives to serving their communities, often working around the clock to ensure our safety. Theirs is a commitment that goes beyond the call of duty, a testament to their unyielding courage and selfless service. Do firefighters really rescue cats from trees? This question has been a source of curiosity, humor, and myth for as long as anyone can remember. The image of a brave firefighter scaling a tall ladder to save a stranded feline is a classic one, ingrained in our collective consciousness through cartoons, movies, and storybooks. But is there any truth to it? In reality, it's not as common as you might think, but it does happen. Firefighters, being the community guardians they are, have been known to perform this heroic act when the situation demands it. However, it's important to note that their primary duty is to respond to emergencies that pose a threat to human life and property. A cat up a tree, while distressing, usually doesn't qualify as such an emergency. The myth likely stems from the fact that firefighters have the necessary equipment, ladders, safety gear, and a knack for climbing, that makes them well-suited for the task. And of course, it makes for a heartwarming story. Who doesn't love a hero? There are some humorous anecdotes associated with this myth. One firefighter confessed that the most challenging part of rescuing a cat is not the climb or the height, but the cat itself. Cats, being independent creatures, sometimes resist the rescue attempt, making the firefighter's job that much more difficult. Another firefighter quipped that in all his years of service, he's never seen a cat skeleton in a tree, implying that cats always find their way down eventually. 
In conclusion, while it's not a routine part of their job, firefighters have indeed been known to rescue cats from trees. This classic duo, the firefighter and the cat, is a testament to the firefighter's role as a community helper, always ready to lend a hand or in this case a ladder. It's just one of the many ways they go above and beyond their call of duty. Well, it turns out firefighters and cats do share a unique relationship. Did you know that firefighters do more than just fight fires and save cats? Indeed, their role extends far beyond the burning flames and smoky buildings. They are actively involved in numerous community services, truly embodying the spirit of public service. Firstly, firefighters often play a significant part in public education. They visit schools, community centers, and public events to educate people about fire safety. From teaching the importance of smoke detectors to demonstrating how to use a fire extinguisher, they ensure that the public is well prepared for emergencies. In addition, many firefighters are trained in emergency medical services. In fact, in some areas, they are the first responders to medical emergencies providing life-saving care before an ambulance arrives. They are trained to handle a wide range of situations from heart attacks to car accidents, making them a critical component in our healthcare system. Another aspect of their community service is their involvement in charity work. Firefighters across the country participate in fundraising events for various causes. You've likely seen them, clad in their fire gear, collecting donations in a fill the boot campaign for muscular dystrophy. Or perhaps you've heard of their annual calendar sales, with proceeds often going towards children's hospitals or burn units. Moreover, firefighters often volunteer their time to support local events. They can be seen at parades, festivals, and fairs, engaging with the community and creating a sense of unity. They offer their stations as safe havens for those in need, making them a cornerstone in our neighborhoods. Lastly, firefighters play an essential role in disaster response. Whether it's a flood, earthquake, or hurricane, they are on the front lines, providing aid and support to those affected. They work tirelessly to ensure the safety and well-being of all residents, often putting their own lives at risk in the process. To sum up, firefighters are not just our protectors against fire, but they are also educators, healthcare providers, charity workers, community supporters, and disaster responders. Their dedication and commitment to serving their communities go far beyond what many of us realize. Truly, they are the unsung heroes of community service. Firefighters, the unsung heroes of community service. Ever wondered why most fire trucks are red? Well, the answer lies in a fascinating blend of history, science, and tradition. In the early days of firefighting, back in the 1800s, fire departments were often run by insurance companies. These companies competed with each other, vying for the attention of potential customers. To stand out, they painted their fire wagons bright red, a color long associated with urgency and caution. As a result, red became synonymous with firefighting, but there's more to the story. During the turn of the 20th century, fire departments began to standardize their equipment. Red was the most readily available color of paint, and so it became the default choice. Plus, the bold hue made the trucks easily visible, even in the dim light of dawn or dusk. There's a touch of science in this color choice as well. Red has one of the longest wavelengths in the color spectrum, making it the least likely to be absorbed by the atmosphere and the most visible from a distance. This visibility is crucial when racing through traffic to reach a blaze. However, it's important to note that not all fire trucks are red. Some are yellow, green, blue, or even pink, depending on the department's preferences or local traditions. For example, some believe that lime green trucks are more visible than red under certain lighting conditions, leading to their use in some areas. But regardless of these variations, red remains the most iconic color for fire trucks. It's a symbol of the firefighting profession's rich history, a beacon of safety in times of danger, and a mark of the courage and dedication of those who don the firefighter's uniform. So, the red fire truck is not just a tradition, it's a legacy. Today, we've learned a lot about firefighters, but what are the top three unique facts? Firstly, the inception of firefighting traces back to ancient Rome, where the first fire brigade was formed under the rule of Augustus. This was not just a response to burning buildings, but a preventive measure against potential fires. Secondly, firefighters are not only responsible for extinguishing fires, they are also trained as first responders in medical emergencies, rescuers in natural disasters, and experts in hazardous materials. Their roles are diverse and demanding, making them a crucial part of any community's safety net. 
Lastly, the training process for firefighters is exceptionally rigorous. It involves physical conditioning, technical learning, and mental resilience training. This process can take up to several months, ensuring that every firefighter is well-equipped to face the challenges of the job. These facts remind us of the bravery, dedication, and commitment of firefighters everywhere.